from the deepest, darkest recesses of Dangerous Nerds headquarters. Keith Moncrief and Gary Cassell. Welcome to another episode of Pop Culture Minefield. Uh, that's Keith over there. He's the handsome black man. And this white guy down here, that's Sandy Calora. He's the guy who made Batman dead end. But that's not all he ever did, even though some of you schmucks, that's all you fucking know. <laughs> He's done other stuff. I'm going to love this already. So, Keith, my man, my, yes. black, my brother from another mother. Come on, say something. Uh, man. Bring us you into know what? this. I, I, I got to ask. You know, I, I did at least want to key off of, you know, at least in one portion of your documentary. Mm -hmm. The whole thing about being a comic book fan yep. seems to have really influenced your career. Correct. And you hear that a lot with a lot of people that are around our age in the business. So mm -hmm. how many would you guess that you've run across in the work that you do that are comic book fans themselves? Because given the current circumstance with the comic book business over the last three weeks, I'd at least like to kind of find out how many comic book fans are actually in the business with you that you've met. I would say in, most. I would most, say most. Yeah. Um, you know, most of the, uh, the, the, the creature design uh, people that I came up with in the industry, Steve Wang, Jordan mm -hmm. Shell, Eddie Yang, uh, Jose Fernandez, those type guys. I mean, we were all influenced by that stuff. I would say it was, it was more, like, see, f f for me, what was interesting was when I was real young, like, say, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, like, it was all comics. Batman, Iron Man, Spider-Man. Uh, I was a big fan of the Marvel Frankenstein, Tomb of Dracula. Like, I, and then I, I was also, I was really into creepy, eerie, you know, all the, all, all, you know, all the Warren stuff. But then when I was a teenager and heavy metal hit and like epic illustrated that kind of stuff corbin mobius drule kaza uh you know all, like those guys like serpieri like all that kind of stuff that was i mean those guys were the guys that i would say really shaped my style was like you know like if you can even some of this work behind me like you can True. you know you can see like a little mobius in this you know and 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 like it, it's just you know little things from different artists corbin was was a big one um and then you know later you know as i was in the industry and started working um yeah obviously bisley i mean like i i couldn't believe like slain was just the great i i to this day i mean you know bold statement but i've been in the industry long enough to make it you know i slain i i think bar none that is that I think is the most phenomenal comic book ever drawn. I, I it's just it, it, it it's it, it's mind boggling to look at the amount of work in that. Mm -hmm. And I like Alex Ross's stuff too. I'm a big fan of painted stuff. So um, you know I you know I love Alex's stuff too. Um, but I, you know Bisley is I mean he uses so much color and 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 some of it is so like. When I was watching him work, like he he he'd take a spray can and just like spray some color down, and take his thumb and just be like, oh, and he's like, yeah, mate, you know, he's drinking a beer and he's fucking like, like, like you know, I I like Alex's stuff is very meticulous and perfect and beautifully rendered. Like Simon's stuff is like Frazetta on steroids, you know. I mean. You know, you look at like I, I, I think he took Frazetta and ratcheted it up a level. You know, yeah, and, um, and he was he was prone to using some of the uh, colors from Boris, like here in this picture I put up. Yeah, uh, there's there's a lot of okra in there. Yeah, that's Boris that's, was known that, for. That's the cover to the Slain portfolio. I have. Yeah, that's it's really well done. I mean, I his stuff is just amazing. Um, you know, and he was. Uh, he was he was a big fan of Dead End. He 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 really, finally made somebody did it right. It's a big dude and blah, blah. you know like he was all into it. But yeah, you impressed even my girlfriend. And, did I? Uh, yeah, she's she's hard to impress. She's like the the shot where he 
has landed in. in the Let me guess, cape. the cape. Yeah, it's the fucking cape. And when he stands up, she she about lost her shit. She's like, oh my god, oh my god, somebody got it right. And I'm like, yeah, there you go. Yeah, everybody thinks that's an effect shot, and uh, and it's not. It's uh, I put him in a puddle, and we we spread the we spread the cape out over the puddle, and when he stood up the cape slid across the water and just it was just, beautiful it, it, yeah it was it was really cool it was it was uh it was a little it was a magical moment for everybody it was really it was cool everybody dug it this is a micro wolf by the way oh i see that it's one of those little yap yap dogs no 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 okay. that's not yeah oh good it's very quiet very affectionate yeah. and uh, uh it bonded with me and deanna very it's like I love this. I, I I'm usually a big dog guy. Mm-hmm. Guy, I, yeah. I love this dog. I love this okay. dog. Look at her. Look at her. Oh, <sighs> so weird. But she was like bugging me. Yeah, go okay. away. Go lie down. Threw on the bed. Okay. She she's so small <laughs> she can't get off the bed. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> so uh, with Simon Bisley, you know, it's like um, uh, I liked the frenetic energy that he put into stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, and there, that's sort of the artist that I really was drawn to, uh, mm-hmm. going into the you know the later part of the '80s, going into the '90s. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I love that stuff. I forget his name right now. Uh, Bill Sinkowitz. Sinkevich. Sinkevich. Um, yeah. Him shaking like it, it's that whole line of guys that that just had a that. lot of energy in the artwork. Yeah, just you know, a, a lot of movement, a lot of color. Um, just stuff I'm a big fan of, you know. It's like, you know, why why be boring? You know. Exactly. Um that's the best way to look at it. Why be boring? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying I mean, to cuz look, it. I mean, you know, let's face it. You know, uh, there, there's a lot of stuff out there that it I'm not saying it's not good. It's just boring. It's just mm-hmm. You know, I've seen this a 100 times. Like, you know, you Again, like, and then somebody like Biz comes along, or somebody like Alex, or, um, shit, who's the other guy that I like that does all the women? Adam Hughes. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that guy stuff's insane. Oh, who's the other dude? Oh, um, Frito. Travis, uh, Charé. Tra- Is that how you say his name? Charis? Charé? I don't know him. He- he, oh, dude, look up Travis Charis. That guy's unreal unreal i think he just did covers I, I i don't think he ever did a book and then um another guy that i'm really into who i've followed his work for many many years is david williams oh i know his work yeah dave that that guy unbelievable so like such an amazing knowledge of light and shade and 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 shadows and form like just simple his stuff is simple but I like simple, like it because if you could do simple, you, you know it's you know it, it's like it, it, you know it reminds me of like the '90s, you know when, uh, you know when uh, what's his name, you know Lee Feld and all those guys were popular. Like I never mm-hmm. liked any of that stuff. I, I I just, you know, it was you just mean, like you mean people like, like, you know Todd McFarland and. Yeah, but at least Todd could draw, you know, I mean, like, yeah, like, yeah. you know, you know, Lee Feld is just a talentless hack, you know, I mean, he can't draw. I mean, it, the stuff is just bad. It's it, how those books got popular, Young Blood and all that bullshit. I, those are bad. That's bad. He, he did two things. He's a good creator. And he, uh, he, he created, can't draw. Can't, I never said he oh, wasn't no. a good creator. I said, he oh, can't no, his, draw. his sense of drawing the human waste um the human uh, body the guy yeah, can't yeah okay. he's awful awful but, sorry uh, i was looking at some travis work here yeah um, yeah no travis yeah that guy's sick he's i'm so pulling good. it up here right now yeah he work. he works on canson a lot he, do, he does like a lot of work on canson paper with like Look colored pencils and stuff really 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 good you good uh i don't know if you still have time to read comic books but do you find yourself gravitating towards a lot of the collections or coffee table books of, of many 
uh, artist's work that you that you enjoy? You know what, Keith? I I I do still read a lot, but it's all older stuff. I don't. I'm not into any of the new stuff. Like, you know, I'll read Slain a couple of times a year. Um, mm-hmm. I like. Um, I love Killing Joke. Uh, what else? What's I mean? Watchmen. You know, all the classics, you know, I mean, like, that's, that's more the stuff I read. I mean, I have a huge pile of, like, heavy metals, epics, uh, eeries, creepies, like, I've got all that stuff in, you know, just, just piled up next to my bed. I just, I, I just read tons of it, you know, and, uh, yeah, so I I I actually read quite a bit. It's just, you know, I don't, um, I'm not. I just I just don't dig a lot of new stuff, and it's the same thing with movies. Yeah, like I still watch a ton of movies, but it's Blade Runner, Star Wars, yeah. mm-hmm. The Thing, stuff um, that you can watch. Raiders, and still learn something from. Yeah, like, Raiders. Uh, yeah, right now on the screen is uh, your your little short film, uh, Shallow Water. Yeah, mm-hmm. ooh, there's my shampoo commercial shot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Little thing I learned uh, shooting a uh, a shampoo commercial, the slow motion hair twirl. Ah, uh, yeah, it but, works. Yeah, it hey, works. listen, that was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun making that movie. How's it, it going? Cool, cool, cool. Up oh, here's the creature shot. Oh yeah, so that's the, oh you're giving away the end of the movie. Can't do that, man. We gotta leave. Gotta leave him wanting. Gotta leave. Gotta... Well, you'll have to excuse me. I'm eating half price Easter candy. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. No. Um. Oh man. Come on, Keith. And, and Sunland just playing. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm We're in our fifties. We have brain farts. <laughs> hey, I'm fifty-one, I'm bro. Of... I'm I'm right there with you. I I've been I've been I've been doing a lot of. We have these funny um, moments on the show, Sandy, where um, we've got access to Google at any moment while shooting the show. You're Who's like you're like Jamie struggling? on uh, yeah, you're like Jamie on Joe Rogan. You've got you, you know you got the uh, you know they always can pull up whatever. It's right. Yeah, but we forget yeah. to. And we'll be sitting yeah. there like, <laughs> what the hell is that guy's name that we're trying to think about? And then I, about a minute into it, I'll go. You know, That's we, okay. we you have got, Google. Look, look, I got I got plenty of Reese's uh, eggs here and shit. You can forget me I'm all, I'm all, I'm all good. Well, what particular comic was very influential in your early years of starting out, and what would you say is the most influential right now as a man in his fifties, looking back at his amazing career? Hmm. Good question. Um, the first comic books I read was the Marvel stuff in the mid seventies. Um, Neil Adam, uh, uh, the Neil Adams Batman, which obviously that was DC, but um, I was really into Spider Man, uh, Hulk, Iron Man. You know all the basics. I really liked What If. I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Monster of Frankenstein, Tomb of Dracula, Werewolf by Night, all that cool oh. 70s stuff. You, know? you are just sending me flashbacks now. It's, it's, no, it's I mean, <laughs> we're all the same age, so that's what we read, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I grew up I on Neil Adams. He was, yeah. he was, he, he that was, he was in the band. doc, he was in the documentary. I saw mm-hmm. that. Yeah, he actually agreed to do it. And I, what I thought was funny was that when he, he says, Why didn't you ask me? Oh, yeah, he's, he's so freaking funny. He's like, it could have been even better if he would have just asked me. Yeah, he's funny. <laughs> um, now I'd say, you know, what? why I think that's such a great question, Keith, is because, excuse me, I'm eating. Um, I, um, is that I, I, I think, like you said, you know, looking back, you know, where my career is now, it's that same stuff that I like, that I look to, that I reference. It's, you know, it's Neil. It's it's Gene Colan. It's um, it's Mike Plug. You know, it, it's. I was going to you know, ask you about Plug. I got to work with Plug uh, on an animated movie called Valiant, uh, and he got really annoyed with me because I think I had him sign 
every single one of my Planet of the Apes comics. <laughs> He's like, how many of these you got? I was like, just keep finding them. He's like, just don't put these on eBay. I was like, all right, don't worry about it. I, I swear um, I won't. Yeah, no, Plug is killer. He, like, I, I like his stuff. Um, yeah, because his work on the thing. Mm. Mm. I actually, check this out. Um, it was, I forget what year it was because I'm horrible with numbers and years and stuff. And plus my brain is really fried. Um, when I worked with Rob Bottin on Total Recall uh, and RoboCop 2, um, Henry Alvarez, my mentor, uh, was Rob Bottin's right-hand sculptor for many, many, many years. Worked on yeah, Legend and too. all that stuff. He, um, he took me into the art room where like nobody was allowed to go. I got to see all Mike Plug's original thing, drawings, like all, like that was pretty crazy. Like I, I, I held those original drawings in my hand. It's pretty rad. Like, you know, it's like, God, I remember seeing this in like, uh, what was it? Like Cinefantastique magazine or whatever that was. Cinefax, I don't remember. Cinefax but... was the, the breakdown magazine. Yeah, Cinefantastique yeah. was just a promotional magazine. Yeah, but wherever I saw that, I just it was cool to hold the original drawings in my hands, you know. And uh, I remember as well, Henry had made some absolutely exquisite, exquisite wax figures of all the characters from some of the movies Rob had worked on. Like uh, he did Darkness, he did Lily, he did. Uh, uh, Brown Tom, Meg Mucklebones, he did Robocop, he did a couple, he did a big Norris head from the thing. Wow. And, and I mean, oh, and I got to see him like make all those. And I mean, they, they, act, they look better than the pieces in the movie. Like that's like how good they were. So I, I was very lucky in the sense that I got exposed to a lot of very talented people very early in my career. And that is why I think I was able to achieve the degree of success that I have. Um, and had I not done that, I don't really know. I mean, I mean, I was trained by Henry Alvarez. I'd worked for Stan Winston. I'd worked for Rick Baker, Botine. I did a stint up at ILM. I mean, I, I was, who was luckier than me? And, you know, when, when you're young and so impressionable and there's all these amazing artists around you, Steve Wang, Jordu Shell, Greg Fiegel, Jim Cagle, um, Scream Mad George. I mean, all these people that I, you know, that I got to work with, Henry, Fernando, like all, just all these phenomenal sculptors and painters and you know, you know, people that I got to, you know, that I got to work around, um, you know, people that I that I worked for outside the movie industry. That was another thing that I did that which eventually led to the early work I did in comics was that like a lot of guys, you know, if you didn't have a steady job at one of these effects places, they would lay you off in between shows like they like the show would finish. And then there'd be a break and they'd lay a bunch of people off. They'd keep two or three people on, but I was never good enough, you know, to, to be one of those guys. Or I just, you know, I never fit into the political hierarchy of all the bullshit that was going on there. So what I would do is I would go do a comic book cover or I would go sculpt a, an action figure. Or that was when I met Gary Goddard and I, the guy who directed Masters of the Universe. Yeah. And I did a ton of shit for him. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, every, I'm going to say pretty much every toy line that that dude has developed from 87 or 88 till now, Captain Power, Skeleton Warriors, Dragon Force, I worked on all that shit. So, so wait, wait, wait. I, now, wow. now you worked on Captain Power? I did. I did. Wow, the lead actor from that is actually from Missouri. There you go. No, I mean, I again, I was I was super lucky, dude. I it, it's I I say it in my books, I say it in the documentary. I cannot stress that enough. I'm not being self-deprecating. I'm not saying that, you know, I I haven't been successful or I don't have some degree of talent. I'm just saying 
I was lucky. I, I, I met a lot of really talented people very early in my career, 18, 19, 20, all through my early 20s that took me in and, and, and showed me things and taught me, you know, how to do stuff. And what's crazy is now at 50, 51, to go back and look into my body of work, it, it, it's fascinating to see the growth of – Wow, like, I mean, I was never as bad as Lee Feld, but I mean, you know, there were times, <laughs> there were times where, you know, shit wasn't that great. But, and, and then, you know, but then, you know, you, you look at the drawings and you're just like, wow, like how. Yeah, I think Alvarez yeah. uh, said that in the documentary about your work. It's like, it really wasn't that good. <laughs> no, well, sculpting wise, sculpting wise, yeah, I. He, he, he looked at my portfolio and he saw all of the drawings I had done, all these creature designs. And he, and he says, look, you know, I can introduce you to Rob Bottin and you can draw and you, and I was like, look, I, I want to learn how to make this shit. Like teach me more about sculpture and how to make molds and how to paint stuff. And, you know, again, between guys like him, Steve Wang, uh, you know, Eddie Yang. I mean, I, you know, I just I, I just learned how to do all that stuff. And it, it was um, I, I was very fortunate, very, very fortunate. So, it, it, you know, and then meeting guys like Dave Williams and and, you know, the short little stint I had with Bisley. I mean, Dave Williams as in DC Comics, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I'm, yeah I'm, he, I'm friends with him, too. Yeah. He's he's he, he's my brother from another mother. That guy. He's the coolest guy ever. I um, I interact I, you with know, him. A lot. Yeah, uh, I also know Jerome Moore. Do you know? Do you know Jerome? Mm -mm. Ask Dave to send you some of Jerome's stuff. He's he's been. I, I think I think he's a little older than us. He he's been working for Marvel and DC, uh, both on the comic book side and the animation side for the the better part of thirty years. I mean, wow. he's really good. I mean, he was the when I first met Dave Williams. He was working at Warner Brother Consumer Products. He was working there, and he was working with Jerome Moore. And yeah, and I want to point out with Dave, that is a top-notch Batman artist right there. Oh, phenomenal! He loves Batman, dude. Oh phenomenal. yeah, yeah. That that's how I met Dave. A mutual friend of ours uh, was talking to him one day, and the Batman Dead End came up. This was like very soon after it came out. And uh, it was our friend Damien, who was actually the guy who played Thanos in the first Avengers movie. Uh, he was talking to Dave one day, and he, they were talking about Dead End. He's like, oh, Sandy's my homie. I see him at the comic book store every Wednesday. Da, da, da. He's like, no, you got to bring that dude here. So, yeah, they, he brought me over to Warner Brothers, and I went over there and hung out with all those guys. It was a lot of fun. They, um from what I remember, it was a lot of me watching Dave and Jerome play Soul Calibur because <laughs> uh, they, were, they were really into video games. And, and I, I've never been a video game guy. I, it's just never really been my thing. I'd rather be outside surfing or fishing or diving or doing whatever. Well, but... that's – yeah, yeah. you're the other nerd. Uh, a lot of us are indoor guys. <laughs> it's like yeah, you know, I've been I playing was, video games since 74. I was always the nerd that could twist you into a pretzel, you know. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. You proved the point that I talk about all the time because all my best friends, I'm still close to them to this day that I grew uh -huh. up with, we yeah. were nerds. We were Poindexter-looking dudes, but yeah. we could fight. Oh, I was a Poindexter-looking dude, bro. If you saw me, if you saw pictures of me from 7th, 8th grade. Saw, I've seen a few pictures of you young. Uh, but I got to tell you, uh, there's a mistake that's made by people in, in TV and film Mm -hmm. They depict nerds as like these guys that are just so pansies. And it's like, no, we grew up hard knock Catholic. I was hard knock Catholic. Yeah, same uh, here. Yeah. Uh, we were fighting. Jim Woodward is, he's also, uh, he runs the uh, Facebook page okay. for this show. Oh, and cool. he and I grew up together. And I'm still close to all my childhood friends. Okay. And uh, including one of the producers on the show, Craig Edwards. Okay. And, uh, we all grew up together, and Craig was like a hell. We're all artists of some kind, and mm -hmm. uh, but nerds. And somebody made the mistake of thinking that nerd means that you're a pussy. Yeah, that's and not really true. No, it's not true. And but mm -hmm. shows really depict us that way, and it annoys me. 
Yeah. It yeah. tasks me. It tasks me. It, it tasks me, and I shall have him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like uh, that show. I I blast it all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. What is that show that I blast all the time, Keith? I forget the name of it. I hate it so much. Big Bang Theory. Yeah. It's like I don't, yeah. that is. I only knew one nerd like that growing up. All the nerds I knew also played football or wrestled. Uh, I was a golden. I golden glove boxed. You know, basically, boxed. you're you're talking you're talking community. All yeah, all yeah. the geeks and nerds I knew were more like the characters on Community. Yeah. yeah, and that that was a much better show and a much better representation. And, and I, I identified with you in the documentary talking about where you came from because, like, you give you kind of give off this vibe of being kind of a dick, and that I proudly wave wait, my what? dick. What? Okay, wait a minute. Back that up. you are in that you are in people's faces, and uh, did you, you just say I give off a vibe like I'm kind of a dick? Yeah, where did and I like that? <laughs> well, I in a, wear that. In a proud wear, way. Hey, 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 Sandy, Sandy, I guess I guess I wait, gotta wear that. Well, it's a compliment. Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta wear that. <laughs> it is a compliment because uh, I'm a proud no. I, you know what? Yeah. If you're if, if if you're calling that somebody that speaks his mind and is not afraid to say things that not everyone is going to agree with. Then, yes, go. I can come off like a dick because my father and my uncle and the men that raised me always taught me to express myself and not to disrespect anybody or step on anybody's toes, but speak your mind. There you go. You know what I mean? I just, like I just pissed off a major name. And I don't want to say who his name is. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were friends. And he fucking deleted me yesterday. Really? Um, he was already irked. Over the fact that uh, Keith and I, uh, in particular, I had spoken negatively about uh, Star Trek Discovery and um, mm -hmm. Star Trek Picard, because I think they're garbage shows. They are. Variety. They are. Uh, just terrible. They are. Yeah. And uh, I make fun of Kurt. And he was like, bent Wrath, out of of shape. Con, Wrath of Khan, that you tell me. Like, it, this isn't hard. This isn't hard, guys. No, it's so easy, and yet they these idiots like this shit. And um, I, I call it. Yeah, I just talking. I fucking hate it. I fucking hate it. So I was making fun of it, and this certain person, well-known comic book person mm -hmm. uh, and film, uh, tried to take me to task. And you know, what's that? Uh, what quiz? Pop quiz? Hot mm -hmm. shot. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like, and I just came right back at him, and then Keith jumped into it too. And uh oh, did you get yourself in trouble, Keith? Well, he did not <laughs> respond to us, like or anything. And then I said something about people because I'm conservative. You know, okay. I'm not overly conservative, but I'm conservative. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and um, uh, I said something that uh, uh, I can't even remember what the hell I said, but it was not really a negative thing. It was very cursory. Mm -hmm. And this guy writes, wow, and then deletes me and, and blocks me. And I'm like, yeah, a pussy. I don't you know, like you. You know, I, I got, you know, I got to say, um, I, I am absolutely flabbergasted by the divisiveness in this culture. I absolutely am floored by it every day. I, it's, it's hard for me to believe that. When I was a kid, my parents would invite over friends of theirs that had kids and we would be out in the yard playing and they'd be barbecuing and stuff. And they had very different political views than my and parents they would just had. Talk. And they're just talking, eating hot dogs, having a great time. And they went home and that was it. It, it you know, it wasn't like the other side is evil. It's just, well, we don't agree. But that's with where these they people. are today. That's where they are today, and I don't get it. You know, I listen. I can tell. Listen, I'm not a political dude. I, I'm not. But I'll tell you this: this country is in serious trouble when your two ca candidates for the president of the United States are Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Okay, <laughs> now. Granted, one of them is the lesser of two evils, but it, it was like, well, like, wow, like we're here. 
you know, like we are here, you know, and I, I think what happened was people were so enamored with the idea of Obama being the first black president, which was cool. And I was glad I was alive to see it. Amen. Pretty cool thing. And you know what? I actually liked him. Good looking dude. Well spoken. Didn't agree with all of his policies. But you know what? I didn't hate on the dude. But you know what? Now Trump gets elected and everybody's, you know, the other side's hating on him. I, I just, especially now, it's like, dude, these guys, like, I, it, it, people send me all these links all the time. Like, these guys are still arguing. Or, they're arguing about ventilators. Fix the problem. Like, they're, they're you know, it's, I, it's, look, you know, look what's going on. You're arguing about 40 thousand ventilators or four thousand ventilators or well i've been i've been i've been really pounding the media on my facebook page i because my problem isn't the politicians right now as much as the media because mm-hmm. the media inflated something in a way that caused a mass panic that shouldn't have been a panic situation only a small percentage of people are going to be deeply affected by this mm-hmm. and now but now we find out keith were you aware of this that uh of the 13 percent of people that have died from this disease in america 40 percent of that 13 percent is black i that's, did not know that that's yeah, that's I, I insane that. yeah that's insane um so are you saying that it seems to be affecting uh the black community, the black community more than any other community yeah and, and, and part of the reason is because uh you know environmental uh, a lot a majority of people that live in areas that are not environmentally good are people of color people in the black community people mm-hmm. uh and you know uh, the and, and gentleman and also from the the black community spoke today and i, I want to say it before i forget it he yes. said that they often live in, in densely populated uh areas and homes that there are mm-hmm. more people living in the home mm-hmm. than in other households that have yeah. more money, uh, better economic areas. I think we're seeing yeah. that across the board these days in yeah. this country, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I really do. Yeah. And and I, I just think, for me, I mean, looking back on, on where, I, where I was born and where I initially grew up, I mean, the air quality was not the best. And that seems mm-hmm. to be part of the course. And so yep. you're going to have higher incidences of children born with uh, lung disease and other afflictions. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, of course, this is definitely going to affect a lot more people of color. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really see it as anything other than just that. You know, I know I've yeah. heard some weird theories and it's just like, okay, well, that's fine. But <laughs> I just. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think, you know, Keith, I think I think they're going to throw a lot of stuff like that at us in the upcoming months. And it's just up to us as a culture to kind of sift through it all. Yeah. And, and, and try and figure out what works best for us as a, as, as a, as a planet, you know, as, as a community of human beings, you know, well, I believe um, there's something to be learned from the movie, the thing you think. And um, what is that? <laughs> canned foods i suggest we all eat out of cans that's what i do i dude, I, dude ever since i told you if i don't prepare it I, I eat out of a can uh yeah that, Tough that times, movie affected man. me too much <laughs> now i'm gonna point out that um that watch watch clark <laughs> watch him close do you hear me <laughs> I'm like, feeling like, much better now. Yeah, he's. I'm feel, I want to come back inside. I'm feeling much better now. <laughs> I'm not going to hurt anybody. I want to come back inside. <laughs> See, he's all drunk. He's all drunk. He's all, watch Clark and watch him close. Do you hear me? That's <laughs> five movies. Great. And, and that, yeah, that, it's, that it's was... my number two favorite film of all time. Number one, Blade Runner. Hey, something we got in common. No, you know, you know what's interesting about Blade Runner? I tell my girlfriend this all the time. Um, it's not my favorite movie of all time, but it is the best movie ever made. 
I think Blade Runner is the best movie ever made. I think it's it's the single most influential film. Absolutely, it. I think Blade Runner is the greatest artistic achievement of the 20th century. That's what I, I. That's that's 100% my opinion. agreement. Now, Keith, tell him who I am with Blade Runner. This is a little known fact that people will approach me and go, go ahead. Gary Cassell is the man, well, one of the people, but is the man that ran Blade Zone. The Blade Runner fan Blade club. Zone. No, yeah. you were that dude. I'm that dude. Yes. That's crazy. Blade Zone. I started Blade Zone as a sub page, like on GeoCities. They, 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 put, you, Fire they in put you in dangerous days. You were in dangerous days. Yeah, I'm not personally mentioned because I put Gary Willoughby in charge. I said, okay, I'm done. I've got to focus on my art career. Mm -hmm. um, you take over and I'll help. Now I run the Facebook page and because oh, okay. it's easy for me to do. Uh, mm -hmm. He runs the uh, – but it's so funny because we're such a tightly knit community. Uh, all the friends I made through Blade Zone in the 90s mm -hmm. are still close friends of mine to this day. Mm -hmm. And uh, But uh, I, I digress. I was going to point out. Politically, Keith is a liberal, okay. and I, I'm a conservative, and okay. we never we never argue. We we've discussed, and we get along. He's one of my best friends, one of my closest friends. Uh, we can talk for fucking hours. We I don't agree with half the shit he says. I know he doesn't agree with half the shit I say, but look, we respect look. each other. We love each other. You know what? For me, uh, it's just. Being a, a, a kid that grew up in the 70s, I knew... Which was arguably the greatest decade ever to grow Fuck up. Fuck yeah. Right? right? Mm. I, I, I knew a lot of people. I knew a lot of kids that, you know, I knew kids that loved DC. I knew kids that loved Marvel. Then you had the weirdos like me that loved both. I mm -hmm. could never really make up my mind between the two. I did. Mm -hmm. But we could all agree that Bruce Lee just kicked too much ass or that we could... You know, uh, watch the latest episode of The Magician. That, that reminds can... me. That reminds mm -hmm. me. My first comic book I ever bought was Ber Bernie Wrightson's uh, Swamp Thing Batman crossover. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was was what? Ber was uh, Wrightson? Uh, Swamp Thing 72, Bernie. And I met Bernie. He signed mm -hmm. that book for me. And, uh, and I hung out with him. I have photos of him and me together before he died. And I was cool. so... My daughter's with him. You know, we became friendly mm -hmm. with one another. He bought my book, you know, and uh, want to hear a cool Bernie Wrightson tidbit? Yes, I yeah. do. His son, John Wrightson, is a phenomenal sculptor himself in his own right. And he worked on Shallow Water. Really? Okay, John, you... John Wrightson worked on Shallow Water. That's Bernie's kid. You need to send me some of the pictures or something. I'd love to see that. Uh, you know what? When, okay, when 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 we're done, send me an address where I can drop you guys some books and some Blu-rays and whatever, and I'll hook you guys up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, that's the other thing about you that I that, that that I really admire. You found time to put together books, and and you you are you are technically, in my opinion, my Phil Collins. Um, <laughs> Because I loved Phil Collins until he became popular. And then everybody wow. was like, Phil Collins is Phil Collins that. I like the fact I, that I, I know who you are, and I'll bring your name up to people, and they'll go, who? Oh? And I'll go, right. Yeah. You're yeah. not a good well, nerd. I only, only good nerds know who you are. Yeah. You know, what, you know what's interesting about the books, Keith, is that um, my father, um, who was a world-class chef, uh, was an educator. He worked for the City University of New York, and he taught culinary arts, and he worked in the um, hotel and restaurant department management for 30 years. Uh, wow. he, and yeah, and he also filled in for a lot of these, um, you know, these big name chefs that, you know, would go on vacation for the summer, because he worked at a college. So he had, excuse me, he had his summers and his holidays off. So he would go fill in for these chefs. And, it, it, you know, he's just a fantastic guy and 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 he told me one time he said a big part of being a professional is sharing your work with the younger group of people that was coming up that is coming up in your stead 
Um, and I always remembered that. And I, you know, and I thought, you know, this is, this is, there, there's something there. Um, and I'm going to make a point that, you know, again, I've taken a lot of shit for this, but I, I do believe it's true. You know, you know, because the books come up a lot, you know, and and you know, my online classes and all that stuff. It, it, it's cool, and 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 that's why I say I wanted to do that is because I wanted to give something and share, being the key word, with the people coming up in my stead, right? But in interviews, you always they always reference it as, oh, giving something back to the industry. What did I take? Yeah. I didn't take anything from that industry. I worked my ass off for everything I ever got. Nobody gave me shit. So that part of it bugs me, and I'll always make a point of it to say I'm not giving back. I'm giving. Um, you know, I... And, and and it's again it's like it, it goes back to words right it's it's that's how we communicate with people now we're fortunate because we can also communicate through our art but for the most part people communicate with each other through words okay i think there's a big difference between giving and giving back i i didn't take anything there's nothing to give back i'm just giving this is what I'm giving you. It's the same thing when people tell me, oh, dude, you look great for 51. Why can't you just say you look great? I, I, I it's, 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 it's just, no, it, oh, d- oh, dude, dude, that's, don't even get me started. Ageism, no, no, no. Ageism is a huge thing in this business. Oh, let me mm-hmm. tell you something. Huge. Let me tell you why I'm a freelance artist. It is running rampant right now. I mean, Mm -hmm. if you're young, you you immediately, in my opinion, you've got a 25% advantage over everyone out there just because you're 25, because you're young. Oh, dude, if you're under 30? Yeah, it's when I got laid off, dude, from my art job that I had had for years, I was going to retire from this place because Mm -hmm. the economy took a dump in 2008. Mm Mm-hmm. I could not find any work again. Even moved to Phoenix to try to be in a bigger pool. Mm-hmm. I'd walk in there. I knew I was the best candidate for the job. Nobody would talk to me because I was too close to fifty. My yeah, career you know was what, done. Dude, I, and I that's just, when I, I went see, freelance. I just I see that all the time. You know, I mean, I I I I'll be up for a commercial to direct a spot or do whatever. And you know, um, people actually think that way. They're like, "Wow, this guy's oh, this guy's fifty. Like, what? What's wrong with him? Like, what do you mean? What's wrong with me? I've been doing this thirty five years, dude. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, you know, what do you? I, that's why I'm here, right? I mean, you've right. seen my reel, you've seen my work. What? I don't know, but I, you know, I, I, um, I, I think that, and I also think that, um. The fact that, um, you know, a, you know, a, a some, you know, a, some nineteen-year-old kid can make twenty-five grand a month on YouTube making videos of him playing video games. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, I don't think that helps either, you know, because it's cool for him or her or whatever that they're making all this money, you know, on, you know, on YouTube and all that. But, um, and I, and that, that gets brought up a lot, you know, believe it or not, in all these interviews I do or whatever, like people always talk about, you know, the streaming platforms and, you know, YouTube in, in particular. And I always get asked, Oh, why don't you have a YouTube channel? And it's like, well, I do. It's just, I'm not as active on it as most people. But the thing is, is that what I find interesting is that, the money that people generate off of YouTube is all ad revenue. Mm-hmm. So in other words, you really don't know if people are clicking that button and watching your video if they had to pay money. YouTube is free. It doesn't cost anything. 
So you take that guy that's got a million followers and makes all this money and tell people, you know what? That click is now a dollar. Every time you click on one of that guy's videos, it's a dollar. How many people do you think are going to do that? That's that it, it to me, that's the question we all need to be asking ourselves because I'll tell you another story that was really interesting. Now, Batman Dead End was made in 2003. YouTube was launched in 2004. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but Batman Dead End, the first year that YouTube existed, was one of the most popular things on there. Now, it wasn't YouTube as we know it now because it was in its infancy and people kind of weren't with it or whatever, but it was popular on there. I remember sitting in a meeting. It was at New Regency at Fox. And, you know, I was, I was, you know, obviously I was frustrated. I, I wasn't getting a job. My name was on the tip of everybody's tongue in the industry after dead end. And I, I couldn't get arrested. So I was getting pissed. So um, I said to one guy, I, uh, I, I, you know, I just started to kind of, you know, get frustrated with the whole thing. And I said to this guy, I, I, you know, I said, look, dude, I've, I've made Batman Dead End, World's Finest, all these commercials that I've done. They've all been made for like no money, nothing. Like they've been made for like micro budget. What makes you think that if you give me more money that I'm not going to be able to do something amazing? Like, why doesn't your brain work like that? Know what the dude told me? He goes, well, people are downloading your movie for free. We don't know what the monetary value of Batman Dead End is. And I, I was sitting, I stood up, stood up in the meeting. And I said, motherfucker, have you ever been to a comic book convention? And he, and he kind of, he goes, no. I said, you should go and see how many people are selling bootleg DVDs of Batman Dead End. Then you'll see how much money that fucking movie's making. Because people out there, not me, mind you, because I'm, you know, obviously I'm legally You're bound. Legally not allowed other, to. Right. Okay, but there are people out there that have made quite a bit of money off of my back. And that's fine because, I, you know, that movie put me on the map and I'm, I'm not going to complain about it or cry over spilled milk. But the facts are the facts. And sometimes people don't want to listen to the facts. And I think that references back what you were talking, Jerry, about like, oh, you know, people, you know, I can come off the wrong way to some people, harsh, brash, whatever, because they don't want to hear the truth, dude. They, no, they, they don't want to hear what's really up. You know, it's like, how come you haven't directed a big feature yet? That's why. That's why. Because people just, they didn't know what to do. They were just like, here comes this guy with all this confidence and all these scripts. And all. I mean, my reel was deep at that point. Because you got to remember, I had directed two shorts before Dead End, which were very successful. I was directing commercials for Level 7. I was already directing international spots. I had directed two spots for the World Cup, the Soccer World Cup in Japan. I was signed to a commercial agency that had, um, you know, guys that were directing features in it already. So it was just kind of, it, it, it was just, you know, I, I wasn't willing to do the junk that they were giving me. And I kind of stuck to my guns to say like, look, it, it, if I'm doing this, I'm gonna do it my way and I'm gonna do my movie. So, you know, after three or four, you know, four years of pitching movies, I, you know, I, 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 I was telling somebody this this morning. I was just like, I, you know, I had to say to myself, I, I came to this town to make movies, not pitch them. I need to go make a movie. So I went and made Hunter Prey. I, I used my own money. I raised a little bit more money and I went and made Hunter Prey. And, you know, it is what it is. I like the movie. I didn't know who you were that well early on, mm -hmm. and I I got that movie. And I thought that's a really good movie. Thanks, man. Yeah, no, it's 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 you know it, it's it's old school sci fi. You know, it's not a lot of special effects and yeah. you know a bunch of crazy shit. But you know, it sort of is what it is. I've been following you since MySpace. I started not following you, but 2004 is when I saw Dead End. Okay. 
And I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? This shit's brilliant. And I was excited, too, that you got to work with Koenig, you know, before he died. Andrew, yeah, yeah, what a shame. Dude, that guy came to his audition in a purple suit. Ah, I'm not surprised. (laughs) Swear to God. I'm not surprised. It was epic. He knew it was for the Joker, so he showed up in a purple suit. That's funny. Um, I, you know, God, your Joker was spot on. Uh, everything Super was fun. so fucking good. Just, just a lot of and, fun. And when it, also in the documentary, I liked that that was brought up because I remember the first time uh, I was at uh, Wizard down in New Orleans. I was Wizard at, World. Uh, I was mm-hmm. a guested, uh, guest uh, artist at their show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I saw that Red Predator. Big Red. Yeah. Yeah, that's and a toy I'm like, now. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it was that- a toy. That's an official toy. And I'm like, holy yeah. shit. From an eight-minute is... movie that's got like 30 seconds of screen time. Yeah, I, I was like, holy shit, that's from Batman yeah. Dead End. Yep. And I'm like, I hope he gets some money for that. <laughs> no, because no, you didn't hold rights to a goddamn thing. You got to make something. Like, I love Shallow Water. <laughs> and that Shallow Water is not feature length. And it annoys me. It annoys me. That should be a feature length film. It 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 will be. Better it be. will be. It will be. Take my word for it. It someday it, it it will. I'm very I'm confident of that. I uh you know, just because I I haven't released uh you know a film since then. I mean, it hasn't really even been that long, but um it, you know, it doesn't mean I'm out of the game, you know, so to speak. I mean, I'm still talking to people. I'm still you know, I mean, th- this this graphic novel that I'm working on is going to be it, it is going to be really something special, and I'm I'm very excited about it. Uh, it's going to be presented in a way that no one's ever seen before. The format is very very different, um, and it's a story that I think a lot of people are going to fall in love with, and I, I'm I'm really excited to get it done. Uh, I'm going to launch it on Kickstarter probably in the fall, like after the summer. Yeah. Um, definitely come back on the show. And, for sure, for sure. Um, I was going to show you something. I did I, a... I'd love to just pick your brain more about comics. Oh hell yeah! Well, I want to pick your brain about <laughs> like all the movie stuff because I work I work in comic books, but only out of necessity. <laughs> I prefer working on films. Uh, I like working I, you know, with my filmmaker friends. It's both fun, you know. what I mean, I you yeah. know, but as, as you know, as long as you're getting to be creative, we're we're fortunate, you know. We're, we're lucky guys, you know. I mean, yeah, I, I I do did... movie posters, and I oh, that's cool. Like, yeah, it's like I I do these shit. Oh fuck it, hold on. Well, right. you know, I I've done my share of films. I've just had my head kicked in way too many times, dude. Uh, running with the wrong people. And believe well, me, Matt. L- I listen, plan on dude, doing stuff with you. That that industry is full of really awful people, and I hate to say it, but it is true. And it, I'm not saying there aren't good people. Yes, there are good people in that industry. I've met a few of them, but most of them are just not good people, and they're not yeah. in it for the right reasons. They're not in it for the art. They're not in it for the creativity. They're not in it to make cool shit. They're in it yeah. to make fucking money. Yeah. And when and that's the problem. That that's why when everyone says, "Oh, why aren't there any good movies anymore?" Because people are too concerned with making money as opposed to a good fucking movie. Let's make another Star Wars movie. Let's make another Avengers movie. Let's make another this. Let's make another Harry Potter. Let's make another Michael Myers movie. Let's make another Freddy movie. Let's remake this. Let's remake that. But fuck that shit. Where is all the new shit? And don't get me wrong, dude. I love all that stuff. I love Predator. I love Alien. I love all that stuff. But where's the new one? Where's our generation's Predator? Where is that? Exactly. It's right there on the wall behind me, but they won't let me make it. That's right. And uh, so, Sandy, you got to go make it. Hey, um, capiche? Find me to, hey, find me some money. I'll go do it. You know what I'm that's, saying? I'm, I'm done. To... I'm done putting my own money into shit. That's that's Amen. over. 
You know, well, I got to tell you, I, you know, I look at uh, going to the public for because I funded uh, one of my books mm-hmm. and, on Kickstarter uh, or. Yeah, I okay. fully funded it, uh, but I fired all the writers. I love them. I love them. <laughs> but they totally misunderstood what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I went back and I've rewritten it and rewritten it. And finally, I brought another comic person, uh, Barry Branscombe, mm-hmm. to work with me on this new one. You ought to have and me write something for you. Fuck yeah. We'll talk after the show. But yeah. I want to introduce you to my girlfriend. Okay. This is Deanna, who loved Batman Dead End. Hi, Deanna. How are you? Yes. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> okay, fuck off. Go get groceries. <laughs> I did the grocery shopping. She has to pick it up. He's a sweetheart, really. He he oh, is yeah. loyal. It's nice. Yeah. No, it's a fact. Tell him I'm a dick. Yes. I'm a dick. Um, I'm a flag waving dick. I want Girl, to point out. The girls like guy. tough guys. Yeah. Like, real girls like tough guys. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, and I'll back my shit up. Um, yeah. but because uh, I've threatened kids over my daughter, I raised my daughter by myself until mm-hmm. she, you know, she was an adult now. And uh, but she would love to cosplay. She get, and she was thirteen, putting on sexy Harley Quinn outfits. She'd make them herself, and it really bothered me. But I didn't want to interfere with her creativity. So, mm-hmm. but I watched. I was a hover, and like we're walking down the stairs at Vision Con, and this one sixteen or seventeen year old kid, this other kid turns and looks at my daughter's ass. This says, "Look at her ass." And I grabbed him by the arm. On the stairwell, I said. I've killed people for less than that. That's my fucking daughter, and she's 13. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, it's like, you better be. Yeah. Uh, that's, I will uh... beat an ass. Because, <laughs> but she's an awesome little nerd, too. She's, oh, she's, she, she's definitely your kid, man. I mean, oh, she's, Keith loves her. She loves Keith. She's great. No, no. She is phenomenal, but she's got a mouth on her. She burps and <laughs> farts, and she's gorgeous, you know. Oh my God! She'll walk up and she'll crack a burp off on me. She'll wow. go, "Was that a nine or a 10? And I'll go, "It was a 10. Because we rate we rate burps based off of texture, volume, base, uh, uh, length of you know duration. I thought this was a show about comic books and movies. <laughs> Why are we talking about burps and farts? This is Kevin read, Smith. Read it says we're digging talking fart joke shit. What talking nerdy nerd nerds? Nerdy, nerd, <laughs> nerd stuff. We had the third nerd. It's important, All which right. means that we're talking about our personal shit. Because Keith knows it. He's a dad, too. You okay. got any kids? I do I'm, not. I... I do not. Now, this is where the dick in me comes out. Ah, shooting blanks. Really? Really? Are we doing this? Are we... <laughs> Man, you know what? You know, listen, I got to tell you guys something straight the fuck up. Okay. I'm I'm actually really impressed that this is going this way because it is different. And, you are you know, it's not Batman dead end, hubby, and you're not asking me what the cape was made out of and how many we scallops know. were in it and all that shit. We already shit. know all that shit. <laughs> so, no, it's just, uh, no, it, it's cool. No, um, I, I don't have children because... Um, you know, a lot of, you know, I, I obviously when you're our age, you know, a lot of my friends have children and um, my brother has two kids. Um, and, you know, I've always felt that my work it was sort of like my my children. And that's what I have to fill my time with, um, you know, and and I'll I'll I'll, I'll tell you something. My dad is a really tough dude. He's a he, he's a hard guy to get a compliment out of. To get, I mean, and I've you know, and, and you know, me and my brother are fairly successful guys. You know, well, he came he, from that generation, man. Yeah, but but I, but but I'll tell you one compliment he gave me. He told me he said, "I'll give you this. At least you were smart enough to never get married or have kids because." You know, I'm your father and I know you, and that's just not you. That's and, and he's right. I I can appreciate children. I like working with children. I love taking children fishing and diving and teaching them about the ocean and all that stuff. But at the You're end of the uncle. day, I'm Uncle Sandy. At the end of the day, I can give those kids back 
and say, here you go, Spencer. Here you go, Gabe. Here you um, It's like, I'm good. You know, um, and again, you know, it doesn't mean that those kids aren't wonderful. And 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 to have them recognize me as such and be like, oh, Uncle Sandy's here. And, you know, go down to the dock and, you know, teach him how to cast the fishing rod and stuff like that. It's great. And that's all the stuff that my dad did with me, you know, teaching me how to tie knots, how to sharpen a knife, how to fillet a fish, how, you know, how to do all, you know, guy stuff. So, you know, I think it's important for, you know, children, you know, whether you're, you know, uh, uh, whether you're a little girl or a little boy to have positive role models in your life that can show you these things and keep you off social media, uh, you know, enough, you know, to where you can learn how to, you know, live your life and contribute something to the world Exactly. besides, you know, you know, look how hot I am on Instagram. Yeah, you know what I mean? I, I Yeah. Glued to a device is just yeah. so, so annoying. So I'm 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 big on that, but I just I just I just don't think I can handle kids, uh, especially at my age. I just don't think I'm cut out for it. I, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, uh, I got I, a dog. I'm just not cut out for I it. got a dog. Um, I'm done with kids. My daughter's like, have another kid, Dad, and I'm like, no. Uh, you know, you know look, you know, girlfriend is great. Girlfriend's fine. Like I, it's I, you know, I'm red blooded American man, just like everybody else. But I mean, I. It's just never been my bag, you know, and, and, you know, I've never, uh, I, you know, I've just never wanted to saddle some poor girl with me for 50 or 60 years. I, I just, I, that wouldn't be fair. <laughs> Don't tell anybody my girlfriend's fixed. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Can you see what I was doing before we did the interview. Oh, a little Cintiq action, huh? Yeah. That's what we're interviewing on is my, um, uh, drawing tablet okay well um, look gentlemen um i hate to cut this short but i gotta go but um thank you thank you for your do, let, let's do this again i i i really enjoyed this you guys are awesome i appreciate it's honesty. a conversation it's not really yeah. an interview it's i a totally appreciate the honesty and the back and forth you guys are rad um i i'll, I'll come back anytime you should thank check you out the show i'll send you the link please um, absolutely but, uh, uh, yeah, we'd love to have you back on and uh, talk some more because there's a lot more to cover in this field. There is. There is. So let's 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 plan it and let's and do I it. I want to talk also because my first art job, I was 18 years old, was mold technician for an art foundry. We did real sculptures. Oh, wow. I, so I, got, you, to work you... on, I got to work on a leg to the Vietnam Memorial statue. Wow, right. so you did like the lost wax and all that kind of stuff. Wow, that's great. I, my, I was first a wax technician, okay. and then they found out I knew how to make molds. I'd known how to make molds since I was a little kid. Wow, uh, that's epic. That's and cool. uh, so I started making molds, and then I fucked up one mold. I got a bubble under the ear of Governor uh -oh. Belisle from Virginia. <laughs> Governor Belisle. You know what I'm talking about with that fucking uh, silicone rubber? I, I yeah. I yeah. didn't. I Sometimes didn't even if you even if you evacuate it, it's still going to catch air, and you yeah, got that in there fucking with silicone left one bubble, and yeah. it was a big thing. And I turned at the age of nineteen to my boss, and I said, "If you don't fucking like it, do it yourself." And that's what they did. They fired me. <laughs> yeah, that's what's going to happen when you say that. I unfortunately learned that the hard way myself, but uh... I get a feeling you and I, because I insert myself. In the situations, the job for Iron Sky, you know the movie Iron Sky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did the comic book that helped sell that movie. Oh, okay. And um, it's like uh, Andre, who has one of the biggest shows on the internet on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like he says, "I'm a fan of your comic. That's a really good." Story. And I'm like, "Thank you." Wow. And he, he has a better, sexier accent than me. But, <laughs> but the guy who wrote Iron Sky and the comic book wrote the forward and he says gary just sort of inserts himself i just walk in and went okay i'm working for you let's go yeah i'm the only yeah. guy that can do this let's go i can oh, i dude, draw military I've, I've, I've showed up on so many sets in my life to movies i wasn't working on i got that from in that a, documentary you know, in, a, in a in a crew jacket you know just just so i could watch and 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 watch the DPs and watch them load magazines or replace Amen. lenses and that's how I learned how to make movies, you know. I mean, I snuck on a lot of sets in my life, you know, and places I wasn't supposed to be, and and made a lot of people angry. And I hey. shot some short films, and I got to tell you something. Uh, I learned from Josh Becker uh, from mm -hmm. Hercules and Xena. Oh, okay. uh, he's one of my he's one of my best friends. 
Oh, and cool. I learned from him. I've worked on everything since 97 that he's done. Wow. Very cool. And God damn it. I hate fucking actors. <laughs> um, I can't stand them. And it's like, somebody says, do you want to direct this film? And I'm like, no. You know, no, I don't. I've, 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 I've grown to love actors over the years. I, 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 I really have. Um, and again, I, I've been so fortunate. I, I, I've just been fortunate to work with some really incredible people. And, and uh, it's not all actors. So I better yeah. add to that that some of the actors I worked with were really good. Mm-hmm. But it's that handful of fucking assholes that made it a fucking nightmare. Yeah, but isn't that true of every profession, though? Wouldn't you say? No, as an artist, I work alone, so no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, work, boys. This is my studio. <laughs> All I've right. been on, isolating for years. <laughs> on that note, I got a bail, but um, let's let's do this again soon. And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. You guys, you guys have been great. I appreciate. Andy, the we questions appreciate and, you coming on. It's like a, I absolutely. want to get uh, um, uh, uh, the Chiodo brothers on here at some point too. You know, I you know I can talk to Steve or Charlie, and I can arrange that for well, you. I know Charlie yeah. through yeah. Facebook. Yeah, yeah they're guys, really great guys. They're they're tell great. them they should come on because. I will. They're fine. I've been a fan of theirs since fucking forever. Killer clowns and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, 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 I raised my daughter on that shit. They're cool. They're cool. I'll talk to them. You guys get me an address where I can send you books and Blu-rays and action figures and all that. And uh, we'll talk soon. All righty. All right, bro. Everybody, thanks for showing up. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Pop Culture Minefield. If you've enjoyed the show, please remember to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon. Remember, you can find us at Pop Culture Minefield on both Facebook and Instagram. Thank you again.